We're at the Mokuma Institute of Technology, where he was elected graduating class president and editor-in-chief of the college yearbook. He finished his bachelor's degree in only four years, placing third overall and, and was given special honors for his academic achievement. After two years of the job training, he took the board exam, exams for architects in 2006 and placed first out of 1,105 examinees so out of the He was the first Mahuan architect to do so since, nine, since the 1960s. And in 2007, he got his seventh professional license by taking the board exam for master, master plumbers placing plan overall. In 2008, he obtained his third professional license, taking the board exam for environmental planners, placing fourth overall. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, let's give a round of applause to Mr. Uh, architect Raisan Rais John Bassi. I want to thank first the Archinet, is that right, uh, for inviting me to this uh, seminar. And then uh, I would also like to thank architect Mike for substituting for my time. I'm actually down with the flu, so uh, please forgive me if I might uh, do a little coughing or something like that. But I'll try to slow down the presentation so that each one of you will uh, try to understand the inspirational talk that I uh, prepared for you guys. So am I correct that all of you are graduating students or some are lower first year? First year pa lahat kayo? Mostly are first year. How, how many of you are graduating this uh, semester or next year? Or next year, okay. Anyway, the point of my talk is all about what you will be expecting once you got or obtained your license as architects. So this is my inspirational talk, and uh, I have been practicing architecture for eight years. I got my license in 2006, topping the board exams uh, back then. And I want to share with you, in all those eight years experience, I want to try, I'll try to compress in one hour, if I can. Uh, because I'm really sharing, like what my uh, architect Mike said, is sharing is uh, one of my passions. So that's why I'm very thankful for this invitation. Since all of you are, or most of you are first year, in three years time or four years time, you will be encountering this crossroads. For those of you who will be graduating this year, you are now at this crossroad. I was at this crossroad, that crossroad, eight years ago. I was, uh, I faced the, this intersection knowing that uh, I have some choices to make. Do I go left? Do I go right? Would I go back? Or would I just move forward? And I know that at this crossroad, if I move forward, there are enormous amounts of challenges that I have to overcome. Challenges within uh, my profession, our profession, architecture. Challenges in our system here in the Philippines. Because internal challenges inside me, personal challenges. So. Uh, those challenges, eight years after, those are the same set of challenges that you guys will be facing right now when you reach that crossroad. And uh, the main point here is now it is up to you to decide on uh, what choice would you select. Would you go left? Would you go right? Would you move back or would you move forward? Architecture students, the journey in becoming an architect begins at this crossroad. Now I'm sure all of you want to have the answer to the question, what do I need to expect? After Obama graduates architecture, what will become of me? There is something na laging pinag-uusapan sa mga forums. If you are a graduate of this school, ay, mas magaling kami. Ay, ito, graduate na ito school, ay, mas magaling kami. Mas maraming board top nature dito. Ay, mas marami yung percentage namin sa passing rate. I don't know kung aware kayo dun sa mga pinag-uusapan sa forum. But to tell you frankly, in my honest opinion, there is no such thing as the best architecture school. 
It is a paradox. It is illogical. What I know, in my humble opinion, ha, it is not the school that makes one a successful architect. Always remember that. It is not the school. What you have learned or what you are learning in school is only a small portion of what you will learn when you go outside. It is not the school, but it is the individual, kayo, it is the individual itself who determines or decides. Kayo ang magdedetermina at kayo ang magdedesisyon for yourself kung gusto nyo bang maging successful or gusto nyo maging failure. Not the school, but you yourself. Alright? That's one thing that you need to expect. And this is a breakdown, sort of, of the architecture knowledge of an architect. You could see that what you learn in the architecture school, what you're learning right now, that blue piece of the pie, is only a small portion. And then the red portion is what you will learn from experience. Probably, that's what I'm learning right now, the red part. But to tell you honestly, I still have to learn a lot of things. The green, the larger green part of the pie. And another thing that you need to expect is dealing with people. Sa ngayon, when you become licensed architects, you will deal with a lot of people. And uh, dealing with a lot of people involves like clients, you, have, you deal with engineers. You know clients, iba-ibang ugali ng mga clients. There are clients who have uh, who have bad tempers, there are clients who are lenient, there are clients who have different personalities. Even engineers and co-architects, you will have to deal with them. Engineers having different specializations, engineers that have different levels of education, and engineers and architects that have different behaviors. You'll also deal with contractors who have different ways of, of, uh, of constructing a structure or of doing business. You also deal with the workers, like, you know, mga plumbers, electricians, and carpenters. You will have to deal with them later on. Right now, you might not be thinking about all these things. But later on in life, you will have to deal with these people. And later on, I will also show why. Aside from the workers, you will also might be dealing also with developers who have different profiles, different target markets, and different ways of doing business. You also deal with suppliers and manufacturers, dealing with different products, different specifications, different prices. And maybe you will also deal with inspectors and building administra administrators of different levels of strictness, of restrictions. So, as you can see, if you deal with a lot of people, what does that tell you? You deal with various people, that equates to dealing with a lot of problems. Diba? Kapag nakikipag-coordinate kayo sa maraming tao, marami silang gusto. Yung isang tao na ito, gusto mangyari, ganito. Yung isa naman, ganito ang gusto mangyari. Ikaw, iba rin ang gusto mangyari. So the more you deal with a lot of people in your practice of architecture, the more na sumasalat ang ulo mo. Diba? Ang daming problema. How can you satisfy all of them? And remember the old saying that, diba? you cannot please everybody. There will come a point in time that gagawa talaga kayo ng isang decision that would not be, ano, that would not be popular, di ba? But if it's for the benefit of your client or for the many, you have to stick with that. So, now that you cannot please everybody, how will you deal with these problems? As an architect or as future architects, Dealing with all these people, dealing with all these problems, you are the only person who is expected to manage all of these problems. Why? Because architects are the lead professional in a project. Architects should be on top of the situation. They should manage all of these people, the engineers, the contractor, the workers, the clients, the developers, the suppliers, all of them. But, like I said, how could you do that? 
you first need to know how to, like Architect Mike said, communication. You must learn how to communicate. Bawal ang mahiyain. How can you say something na hindi ka naman nagbubuka ang bibig mo? The drawing mo na lang. Oh, ito. That's not the, the way to do it. You have to communicate with people. That's the one, per, that's the one thing that uh, kailangan nyo tandaan. Aside from that, you have to collaborate. You have to you work as a team. And then last but not the least, most of the time, kailangan mong kumompromiso. Meron kang gusto, meron kang gustong design. But it's not feasible, it's not possible for whatever reason. So most of the time, you have to sacrifice and make adjustments along the way. I'm sure all of you had uh, spent a lot of time diba, designing plates, etc., theses. In the real world, we also do the same thing, but it's for the projects now. We spend a lot of time and effort in designing, in printing, in making plans. But what do you expect? You have to expect that there will still be revisions. Katawag tawag na revisions yan. In the real world, that I'm speaking from my experience as an architect, as a practicing architect. If the plans have already been approved by the owner, di ba? Pag nagpapacheck tayo ng plans, okay na, di ba? Pag sa, sa school. Pero sa real world, minsan, pa-approvahan na ng owner yan. Okay na yung plans. But you still have to expect that there will still be changes. Minsan may mga clients or owner na makakaisip na, ay, dagdagan na lang natin ng kwarto ng isa. Without even knowing the cost or the implication dun sa ginawa ng design. So expect those things na magkakaroon ng ganyan. That's why the school is a good training ground. Kung dito may nakaka-receive kayo ng mga ibang ng mga marks na, di ba ba, uh, 5, hindi naman siguro 3, 2.5, ganyan. Uh, those are marks na parang pagbabasihan nyo when you go out in the real world. Ganon din yun. Pinaparevise nyo, pinapakulit. Buti pa nga may revision na hindi bagsak. Okay? Now, sometimes, when the project seems to be going smoothly, always, always expect that there will be problems. So, how do we deal with all these problems? That's the expectation naman if you become architects. Always expect that there will be problems. But how do we deal with all these problems? To manage yourself. Managing yourself is the only way to solve all of these problems. If you manage yourself first, kayo mismo, di ba like I said, it's not the school, it's not the environment, it's you yourself that decides on whether you want to succeed or not. So you have to manage yourself first in order for you to solve all of these problems that you will encounter. Again, I repeat, if you manage yourself first, the universe, including all of the people that you deal with, will conspire to solve your problem. Do you understand? If you manage yourself first, the universe and all of the people that you deal with will conspire to manage and solve all your problems. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the main point of my talk. You already know and I already enumerated what you will expect when you graduate. Now the next question comes to mind. Alam mo na yung expect nyo, right? In order to become successful, okay? I have prepared during my, uh, when I received the invitation, okay, my sort of nine values of an architect, okay? I-copyright nyo na lang eh. Rise and Basics, I call it nine, Rise and Basics nine values of an architect. When you get the architect license, you do not need to look further kung ano ang gagawin mo. What do I mean? Just by the word architect. Okay? Architect. You already know what you need to do. Let's start with the letter A. A. Actively assert an assured attitude. Act appropriately and avoid avoid apathy. Means you have to strive to have a positive mental attitude in life. Okay? You don't have to be like this. 
like what this picture shows. Positive mental attitude. Remember, guys, the day you start thinking negatively is the day you start failing. Always remember that. Do not think negatively. Always think positive. Kaya yan. Bring up your confidence. Do not, do not uh, make the situation make you worse. You have to control the situation. So positive mental attitude. Because confidence will take you a long way. Confidence in job interviews when you apply. Confidence in closing deals. Imagine if you talk to a person, example kayo yung client, you talk to an architect na na mahiyangin, ay, opo, ganito po, ganun, di ba? No confidence. Paano, how will you expect na if you're the client, you will deal with him and you will pay uh, his services, di ba? So you have to exude confidence. Okay? Ma'am, sir, we could do that, we could, we could do that, etc. Di ba? So you have to communicate with confidence. At the same time, Act appropriately means behaving professionally. Okay, there is a time for everything, di ba? There's a time to play, a time to, at, like at this picture, to fight. But when you, if you want to be treated professionally, you have to act professionally. So this is a no no, right? Also, Avoid laziness and lack of concern. Apathy is what we call, yung, in layman's term, lack of concern. In short, wala akong paki. Diba? Malay ko sa'yo, ewan ko. Hindi ko alam. Diba? All, eliminate those phrases, if you can, sa, sa, sa sarili ninyo. When I was, ano, kasi dati na, nag-CET ako, I don't know if you have CET. There, there was an ad, lagi namin sinasagot, Uh, pag tinatanong kami ng officer, bawal sa sumagot ng, Sir, I don't know, Sir. Lagi ang sagot namin noon, Sir, I'll try to find it out, Sir. You know? Sa CET na na, high school. And I developed that attitude. You must not answer, di ko alam eh, malay ko. Avoid apathy. You always answer, Sige, Sir, I will try to find it out. Ibig sabihin, gusto mong malaman. May problema kayo sa project? Wala ako dyan, ha? Hindi ganon. You have to make, you have to be concerned. Okay? So avoid laziness, bawal kang damad-damad, and procrastinating, di ba? That's a no-no. Excellent. Tulog, tulog na tulog siya. Kakagawa lang ang kakalaro. Okay? And avoid lack of concern. Okay? Letter X, R. Recognize your responsibilities. Retain your reputation. Okay? Recognize your responsibilities and retain your reputation. On the license, you have what we call the power. And according to Spider-Man, diba? with great power comes great responsibility. It's a true saying. Now, architecture, you, re you, you try to remember that architecture is service-oriented. Meaning, Our main obligation, your main obligation when you become architects, is to serve your clients. Why do you need to serve your clients? Because number one, the clients offer the design problem that you need to solve. Pag walang client, walang project. Di ba? Also, clients pay for the services And they are your main sources of income. Always remember that architecture, aside from being a service-oriented, is also a business. So you have to make sure that you have the right, uh, you have the the right amount of clients, so that you have the right amount of projects and the right amount of sustainability in terms of monetary expenses. Niyo, once you are practicing architecture, that's very important. And how do you get clients? Of course, you have to. Satisfy them. The architect and the client, their relationship is very sacred. It is based on trust, tiwala, and confidence. The architects, when you become architects, you make sure that you represent and protect your clients. Paano ba sir yung protect and uh, represent the clients? 
Remember, it is a service-oriented business, architecture. When you go into the construction, di ba? Uh, what you do right now in school is all about planning, planning stage, designing, drawing. When you go out in the field, that drawing, that planning is just a small part of the work. Ano pa yung malaking part na hindi nyo paalam as of now? The construction. When I graduated, when I was in your position, nakaupo ako, when I graduated, I don't know a, a, a thing about construction. I only knew about that when I went out, I graduated, I uh, applied for my OJT, my training. That's when my, that's what the first time that I uh, realized, ganun pala, ganun pala ginagawa yung mga training drawing namin sa school. Okay? So, during the construction stage, you, the, the owner hires a contractor to do the work, the construction. And ang basis ng contractor para sa construction is the plans that you did. Yung plans na mga drinawin nyo. So, you get the sequence, no? Now, the plans that you did is the basis, and the plans that you did is who owns the plan. Of course, you own the plan, intellectual property, but it is your idea and the client's idea. It is both your idea. And as architects, during construction, when the contractor starts building the work, you have to make sure that the plans, the construction is going according to the plans that you and the owner did. Okay? So that's where you protect. Kasi dyan pumapasok ang mga other contractors na may ibang intention. Sisingil sila ng sisingil sa owner. Nauubusan na ng pera yung owner kasi bayad ng bayad. And protect your own designs. So you have to be, number three, be liable and accountable in your designs. If there are mistakes in the plans, hindi ka dapat nagtuturo na that's not my, mis that's not my fault. You have to be accountable and liable. Now, aside from the responsibilities ng architect sa client, there are also other responsibilities that you have to balance. And this is one of the hardest part as architects. Number one, you have to give regard to the client's interest. Ang client, he, she or he, he or she has the budget, kailangan mong i-consider ang return of investment and the style that he wants or she wants. But aside from the client, you also have to look at the technical aspect, the engineering side, the feasibility. Halimbawa, gusto ng client ng uh, one kilometer high building, eh ang budget niya, eto lang. The technical aspect would say na, hindi po pepwede yan. So what would you do? Would you, would you recommend building that, uh, that uh, one kilometer high structure? Of course, there's a technical aspect. And aside from that, there's also the public interest the environment, the safety, and the utility of that building that you that the client wants. So it's not always that the client ang nasusunod. Remember, hindi ang architect when you graduate, you are not draftsman. You are architects. You are trained to think of a concept and to design and to build it feasibly, right? When you talk with the clients, hindi ka pwede, okay, yes sir, ito pong gagawin, ito po, yes sir, ganon. Pag sinabi ng client, okay, drawing mo yan, ganon mo yan. When you become a yes sir or yes ma'am person or architect, you become your draftsman. You have to educate the clients kung ano ba ang tamang gagawin, ano ba ang tamang spatial relationships. So you have to also consider those other two aspects, your technical and the public interest. And also, you have to retain your reputation. And you have to ask yourself the question, how will you be remembered? Okay? Will you be remembered? Kasi ikaw ang gumawa ng ganitong design. What do you think? Baka ginawa kasi sa plan, hindi naka-reflect na may puno. Sa actual, may puno pala. So, nagkataon na yung stairs na dinesign mo, tumapat sa puno. But you were there at the site. So, ginawa lang ng contractor, ganyan ang naging itsura. Will you be remembered as the architect who designed the stairs? 
Nakakaya, di ba? So you have to retain your reputation and be responsible. O kaya ganito, di ba? Sinaraduhan na lang kasi hindi functional. Sabi nung may-ari, ano ba itong si architect? Nag-design na nagdala dyan. Ang taas-taas naman masyado. Hindi, nauuntog kami. Sarado na lang natin. So the owner closed up the stairs that you did. Will you be remembered as the one who designed that? Even to the tiniest detail, si architect naman, nag-specify ng, ng faucet, hindi naman sakto dun sa lavatory. Will you be remembered as the architect who designed that? Diba? So those are little things that you need to consider. And those are construction na sa construction. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, what you do in the plans will also affect yung construction na gagawin. Ito ang outcome. Is that your idea o oh, hindi naman ganyan talaga eh? Baka nag-typo ka sa ano, or namali ng sukat. So very, be very careful. Okay? So you protect your clients, you protect your designs, and you protect your name. Kasi ang name ninyo is very important. Your name is the legacy that you will leave behind dito sa mundo. Ask yourself the question, how will you be remembered when you're done? Okay? So next letter, letter C. Commit only if you can certify its completion. Commit only if you can certify its completion. Okay. This is a very important topic, yung word of honor. Yung it's better to say you can't, you can't make it, you can't do it, but do it, than saying that, sige, gagawin ko, pero in the end, hindi mo naman pala magagawa. So, word of honor, commitment. You always try to have a sense of commitment no matter how small or how large the obligation. Even yung sa barkada nyo lang, kunyari, o oh, sige, pare, kita-kita tayo bukas, ang uh, ano siguro, sa shark, yun, kita-kita. Tapos pagkatapos, yung indianin mo, diba? What, where is your sense of commitment in that? Down to the small things, sasabihin mo sa project, sa pinagawa nyo thesis, sige, I will do the plans, tomorrow kaya ko yung gawin, tatapusin ko, may nakarender na lahat-lahat. Tapos dumating yung kinabukasan, nag-aantay yung mga teammates mo, walang plans, walang render. Nasaan ka? Nag-fail tuloy kayo sa thesis. Darating kasi minsan yung point in time na hindi na verbal-verbal, contract na. So kung halimbawa nag-commit ka to do a project, a construction work, sign ka sa contract, hindi mo na-deliver. Ang mangyayari, ano? Demanda kayo. The next is age. Harvest honor through humility and hard work. All successful people start small. Start at the beginning. Hindi kilala. Sino ba yan? Then, they strive with hard work to reach yung success na gusto nila. They become big. Okay? Now the honor comes. Not because bragging that, ah, malaki na akong company, or magaling akong architect, or ganito, marami na, mayaman na ako, hindi ganon. You always maintain where you came from. Okay? Think about yung humility. Go back to your roots na you were just ones who started small, that only became big. Now, how do you do that? Work is enjoyed. Work is enjoyed with passion and dedication in order for you from a small uh, entity to become a big entity. Improve your insights to increase your instincts, impulses, and intuitions. This, is, this talks about thinking out of the box. It also tells you one of the values of an architect is to understand the whole situation completely. Okay. Another is to anticipate the problems. Like I said a while ago, you always have to expect that there, there, uh, that there will be problems. And then architecture is also a business, so you have to exercise caution. 
Okay? What do you mean by increasing your instincts, increasing your intuition? Right now, hindi niyo pa masyadong... You might not appreciate this, but I have to tell you frankly that, like I said before, architecture is a business. Okay? It's a business. So in every business, you have to exercise caution and you have to protect your business. In my eight years experience sa pagiging architect, I have encountered yung mga sinasabi natin na mga magugulang na tao. Of course, I will not name. Pero magugulang na tao na contractor, supplier, and even clients. Remember, may mga ganun tao. Example, may mga client ka na kunyari magpapagawa sa inyo ng bahay, magpapagawa sa inyo ng uh, building. Pero yun pala, ang modus operandi is what? Just to get your idea. Big sabihin, ay, pala mo. Kung kanyari, magpapagawa si ma'am. O ma'am, ito, yung design ng building, ganyan ganyan, etc. Binigay mo na sa kanya. After a while, biglang hindi mo na siya mahagila, ma'am, saan na po kayo? Ganyan ganyan. Ay, sige, text na lang kita. Ganyan ganyan. Dala-dala niya na yung designs nyo. Yung pala magugulat kayo. Ginagawa na ng iba. Or worse, baka may ibang architect na kinopia yung ano, diba? So, may mga ganong tao. So, improve your insights. How do you do that? How do you prevent that from happening? Kailangan maging aware kayo sa nangyayari. Na may mga ganong palang tao. Na kailangan pala doble ingat ako. Ano ba kailangan gawin ko? Siguro dapat may contract muna tayo, ma'am, sir, bago tayo magbigay ng plans. Diba? So, you have to be safe and you have to protect yourself. Okay? Next letter is letter T. Take note, take care, and take charge of your time. Time is very important. I will show you something na baka first time nyo palang nakita. And this is what we call the urgency importance matrix. Okay? What is this? Okay. Have, has anyone seen this matrix before? Okay. So you have all the tasks that you do in life, whether it's architecture related, whether it's personally related, you could uh, put those tasks in those boxes. Diba? Halimbawa, you have to uh, you have to submit uh, your plans tomorrow. Is it urgent? Is it important? Is it ano? Where do you categorize that? So maybe it's important but not urgent. Okay? Tapos meron kang kailangan gawin na, na you have to reply in an email by the client today. So that's important and that's urgent. So you have to make sure if all, all of the tasks will fall under that category. So all of the tasks in number one, urgent and important, what do you do about that? If the tasks fall in the urgent and important uh, box, you have to prioritize that one. If the box, if the task falls under the number two, important, pero hindi naman urgent, what do you do? You schedule. If the task fall under urgent, but not important, what do you do? You delegate. And what do you do for the, the tasks that fall under not urgent and not important? You try to minimize or you try to eliminate. Three letters na lang. E. Earn as you learn. Learn as you earn. Okay? Remember that earning and learning is synonymous. If uh, you learn something, you are also earning at the same time. It might not be earning in the monetary sense. Diba? Na pera. You, know, you earn through what? The psychological and intellectual income. Okay? I remember when I started working, ang, ang salary ko yata nun is 150 pesos a day. Diba? That's uh, siguro 300 pesos less than a laborer sa construction or 200 pesos less. Ganun ka baba. But what did, why did I do that? Because I first prioritized yung experience. Kasi, this is the sad situation in our country. Once you graduate, 
there is a inverse proportion of the intellectual and monetary income. If the salary is high, here in our country, ha, sa Philippines, kadalasan, the experience is low. Anong example? Example dyan is yung lagi na, na naririnig natin na outsourcing. Diba? The salaries are high if you go out, if you apply for a company that, that do uh, outsourcing work. Pero ano ang experience nyo? Baka ikakad nyo lang yung malimbawa, yung plant box, ikakad nyo lang yung roof, ikakad nyo lang yung ganito. Puro kung ano yung iutos nyo, yun lang yung gagawin nyo. So the experience might not be that high, but the salary is okay, it's good. But at the same time, since I said it's inversely proportional, when the salary is low, dun sa mga architecture firms, the experience naman is tremendous. Diba? You work as a project architect, you deal with all the engineers, you deal with all the, the site works. Pero, sadly speaking, mababa ang sweldo. So, this reality, we, I give it up to you kung ano ang bibiliin ninyo. Ano ba ang mas gusto ninyo? Mataas na salary? pero konti ang experience or mababa ang salary pero mataas ang experience kayo anong tingin yung mas gusto ninyo walang tama at mali sa god okay ako sabi ko nga sa iyo ang pinili ko yung nasa baba i first try to gain experience as i can habang bata pa ako noon okay Kasi darating yung time na if you gain much experience, yung level ng iyong salary ay tataas din. Maghahabol sila. Pero sometimes we, I cannot force because sometimes yung tao may problema sa pera, may pananagutan. So it's really up to you kung ano ang pipiliin nyo dito. Now, let us say kumikita na kayo ng, ng, ano, ng money, ng monetary income. Once you start earning money, okay, what is the next thing to do? Ano ang gagawin niya pag may pera na? Bili na na ng ano, iPad 2. Savings? Or ano pa, kain tayo sa ano. Okay, tama yun, savings. Once you start earning money, savings is very important. Do you know the savings equation? Alam niya yan? Okay, let, I'll show you, eh. ito yung equation. Income, you receive the money, right? Minus mo na expenses mo, equals the savings. That's the savings equation. Would you agree with that? Diba? Tama yung formula, diba? Income minus expenses, equals savings. Right? Tandaan nyo mabuti yan. Okay? Remember that equation. Kasi that equation is wrong. Okay? That's wrong. Income minus expenses is, does not equal savings. Ano ang tama? Let's try to ano, ano algebra, di ba? Palit-palit sa equation. Income less savings equals expenses. Ano ba yung pinahibahan, sir? Eh, parang parehas lang naman. Nilipat mo lang sa equal sign. Ano eh? Ano ba ang mali? What's the point? When you start to earn, the point of this equation is you first save before you spend. Yung first equation talks about okay, may pera na ako. Example, yeah, 10,000. Gastos tayo, pili tayo ng ganyan, pili tayo ng ganyan, pili tayo ng ganyan. Kung ano ang matira ko, uy, may savings ako. That's the wrong idea. Mali yun. When you receive money or income, magtatabi ka muna. Ako ang advice ko sa inyo, when you start working, magtamay kayo ng 10 to 20% of your salary. You put it in a bank, or you put it dun sa alkalsya nyo, bahala kayo kung saan nyo gusto ilagay. Pero 20% of your, your income, yung gross, itabi mo muna. Ano ang matitira? 80%. Yun ang second equation, expenses. Itabi mo muna ang savings, saka kayo magkaan ng expenses. Anong mangyayari pag ginawa niyo yung first equation? Income minus expenses equals utang. Okay? Doon papasok yung mga babaon kayo sa utang. 
Bak, meron na ba sa'yo nagkikredit card? Wala pa rin siguro. Pero yun, yung iba, mahilig mag-credit card. Sa so, pag naging professional ka na, bak, yun, puro utang. Okay? Naintindihan mo mga buti? Yung savings? Alright. Next. Letter C. Ito, very important. Medyo mahaba, pero very important. Ha? Communicate your concepts clearly and completely. Okay? Communicate your concepts clearly and completely. Then next, construct your creations carefully and cost-consciously. Construct your creations carefully and cost-consciously. You have the design, and the design or the drawings are tools. Ibig sabihin parang ano lang ito, tools on how to communicate with the clients and with the engineers because they will be reading those drawings, they will be reading the plans in order for them to know how to to build them. Okay? Like I said before, ang architects are not draftsmen, are not artists alone. Architects should be builders. And that is the main point of this value. Often than not, nakakalimutan natin as, architect, ar uh, as architecture students, as architects, na drawing lang tayo ng drawing. Ang hilig natin mag-drawing, drawing, drawing, ganyan. Di ba? Kaya nga sinasabi lagi ng mga tao, ay, architect ka ba? Eh, di ba galing ka mag-drawing? Di ba? Ganun lagi, di ba? Pero nakikita nyo yung mga best architects na nakikilala, nakikilala natin, di ba? Di ba? Parang makikita mo, mas magaling pa yung yung sketches lang, pero mas magaling pa yung pamangkin mong bata mag-sketch, di ba? So, it's not about the drawing itself, but it's how you construct and you communicate your ideas to your clients. Kung mali at kulang yung idea ninyo, magiging mali din at kulang yung construction. What is the problem with the architect's traditional role? Okay. The main point of this value, this is what I've learned along the way. Huh? When I, I graduated and I worked, ang traditional role pala ng architect. I, don't, I cannot speak for the architects before. Huh? Pero, ang na-realize ko, when you do the design, di ba, simula ng project, design, design ka, ganyan. You, you, you go to a lot of stages sa design. Meron kang schematics, may mga skins, then you revise, and then ang pinaka-ending ng design process is the pre-construction stage. That's where you submit the blueprints, di ba? Usually, that's the culmination of the design stage. Eh. Usually, ah. After nun, parang wala ng architect. Nabayaran na siya, example, like that. Bahala na ang owner at contractor magpatayo ng bahay na dinesign mo, na dinesign mo. Yun ang nagiging traditional role ng architect. And then the architect will just make periodic visits sa site. Big sabihin, para kung kailan siya pe pwede, halimbawa, pagpalagay mo ng bahay ang ginagawa, six months ang construction, pupunta lang ang architect doon. After three months, after two months, ganun, sa mga dalawa, tatlong site visits, and then that's it. Yun ang nagiging traditional rule ng architect, which I encourage you to not do that. I encourage you to make, to, to be an active architect especially during construction. Bakit? Bakit kaya? Tingin mo. Even though na ang architects is ang karaniwang alam nila is drawing lang ng drawing, you have to be builders. Kung pwede nga kayong maghalo mismo ng simento, maghalo kayo eh. Because I've done that on site. Pero that was after na ako makagraduate at after na ako magkaroon ng lisensya. To tell you frankly, hindi ako nakakapag-site pa noon. And I want to share that with you because you have to be builders and communicators of idea. Meron kayong plan, pero how do you construct that? Diba? How do you construct? So, the traditional role of the architect is not fine with me. Gusto kong maging more active. Anong ginawa ko? Once I did the pre-construction stage, the, the blueprints, okay, I still managed to talk with the client. Kausapin mo ang kliente. Ma'am, sir, uh, may budget po tayo. How do you plan to build the house sa ganitong budget? We could recommend contractors, 
subject to our verification para matulungan namin kayo. You help the clients. You continue your service because like I said, architecture is service oriented. It does not end kung saan kayo natapos mag-drawing, kung saan kayo naubusan ng tinta. Hindi doon natatapos ang architecture. Architecture continues on with dealing, with talking with the client. Even after makakuha siya ng contractor, you must perform, like I said before, protect and represent your clients. Make sure that yung ginagawa ng contractor is the same plan that you're, you did it. And then, it is going according to the specification. Walang daya. Halimbawa, naglagay ka dun. Ang design mo, nag-specify ka ng isang material na halimbawa imported. Ang presyo is ganitong halaga. Let's say 10,000. Ang ginawa ng contractor, nilagay niya worth 1,000 lang. So, dinaya kayo. Dinaya ang owner. Para makatipid siya, makakita siya ng 9,000. Saan kayo as, as architects of the project? Kung pupunta lang kayo with the traditional rule ng 3 three times for the whole project, anong mangyayari sa project nyo? Naalala nyo yung pinakita ko kanila? Ganun ang mangyayari. And at the same time, anong effect sa inyo? Yung design nyo parang niloko lang. Nawala na yung original idea nyo, nawala na yung original concept nyo. Kasi you are not actively involved at the construction site. So make sure that you will not do the traditional role of the architect. Hindi lang drawing of architecture, but also building. At the same time, yung feasibility of ideas is also important. Diba? Yung costing, but hindi nyo pa masyado maiintindihan ito until now. But just to, ano lang, just to make you aware that kar karaniwan na nasa school din ako, kasi I graduated sa Mapuba. Lahat ng projects namin, I don't know kung ganito rin kayo, ano, design plates namin, uh, proposed, blah, 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 tapos, uh, ang tawag nito, unlimited funds. Ganon. I'm not sure kung ganon sa inyo. Pero marami sa amin na naging project na ganon. So, if you encounter yung mga unlimited funds, hindi makatotohanan yun. Walang tao, <laughs> unless ang client ko siguro yung napaka-pinakamayaban na tao sa buong mundo. Pero walang unlimited funds. Minsan sasabihin sa'yo, papagawa ko architect ng bahay, magkano pong budget nyo? Uh, ito lang yung mga 500,000. Ang question, dun pa lang sa usapan nyo, alam mo lang, ah, sige mga kasya yan. O kaya kayo mga, medyo hindi po, ano yan eh, kasya. So, feasibility of ideas. Design ka ng design. Yung pala ang budget niya, 500,000. Ang dinesign mo, worth 100 million eh, di ba? Paano naman yun? So, that's important. So, architects are builders. Architects are communicators. And architects are not just draftsmen. Okay? Okay, last na tayo. Last letter. Yes. Lunch na. Di ba? Okay, the last and one of the equally important is like what architect Mike said, teach others. Train yourself and teach others. Why is it important to train and teach? Train yourself and teach others. Okay? When you train, it is the best teacher you experience natin. Once you graduate from uh, the School of Architecture, remember that it what you know is only a small portion. So you have to experience all the architecture knowledge, discover the architecture knowledge on your own. And that is the best teacher, not the school. The school will serve as a foundation. That's a fact. It will serve as a foundation, but it is not a determinant of whether you will succeed or not. Whether you graduate sa province, does that mean that you graduate sa province, you cannot succeed? No. Okay? When you graduate, experience ang labanan kung sino magiging successful at sino ang magiging hindi. And you will encounter mistakes along the way. Definitely. Dito pa lang sa school, I'm sure. Baka meron sa inyo naka-receive na ng sinko, mga ganun. Those are mistakes. And do not be, ano, do not, do not be para ma, tawag dito, malungkot or something like that. You have to be positive and you have to learn ano ba yung nangyari? Bakit nagkaganon? Paano ba may iwasan ito ulit? Okay? So you have to learn through your mistakes and prepare and develop your skills. Hindi kung ano ang alam ninyo pagka-graduate. Example, nung time ko pag-graduate, ang 
lagi akong hasang hasak ako sa sa ano sa mechanical drawing yung mga drafting drafting pag pinaparender na ako ay nako yung wala niyan yung ibang tao na lang diyan so yun ang kainaan ko i don't have the skills sa rendering pero i figure out a way how to research how to yung i research i read books i practice a lot Hanggang sa dumating yung time na yung pagkukulang ko ay na-develop ko na pala. May skills na pala akong ganun. And skills are very important if you apply for work and if you want to be successful. Because the more skills you have, the more the chances that you will succeed. Ang kahinaan ko pa noon yung mga engineering. Yan, sabi ko, ano, ano ba yung mga plugging plugging na yan? Ano ba yung mga kore-korente na yan? Yung mechanical na yan? Hindi ko alam yung mga yan. It is only when I got the license actually, ha, to be honest that I had the more in-depth knowledge on how to construct yung mga yan, yung mga aircon, yung mga lighting na yan. So it took me a lot of time. And that's why I'm sharing to you right now yung mga experiences ko so that you will anticipate that you will have a hard time training to improve yourself. Okay? Kasi, sino nagsabi nito? Di ba si Manny Pacquiao? Sabi niya, if you train hard, the fight will be easy. Okay? Kaya siguro natalo ba? Ganun. Bakit hindi nag-training. Pero, as architects, remember, may board exams din kayo. And that's one of the, ano rin, uh, you have to train hard for that board exam. Kasi one time lang yan. You have to be disciplined enough to train hard and to have a goal. And then you will realize, if you spend a lot of time, exhausted na kayo, sunog na ang lahat ng kilay ninyo, wala na. Wala na talagang ano, puro muta na, nakatutpik na yung, ano, yung mata nyo. Andaling pala ng exam. Ganun. Kasi you train hard. Now, now that you have trained, alam nyo na lahat na yan, what's the next thing to do? Of course, like what I am doing right now. Diba? I have gone through the stages ng, from where you are right now. So I try to teach others and help them succeed on their own. Now, it's up to you if you want to follow all these nine values that I enumerated. So my nine values of an architect, again, A, about attitude and professionalism, R, responsibilities and reputation, C, commit only if you can certify its completion. H, about humility and hard work. I, to improve your intuition. T, to take charge of your time. E, earn as you learn and learn as you earn. The savings equation, remember that. C, communicate your concepts clearly and construct your creations carefully and cost-consciously. And last, train yourself and teach others. Okay? So those are the nine values of an architect. I'm sure all of you have already seen this picture on Facebook. Okay? This is what I did about, mga, ano pa siguro, five months ago yata. Architect and architecture is a very tough profession, a very tough career. Kasi maraming factors na kailangan mong i-consider. Okay? And those are the things that you should know. Hindi nga lang yan eh, kulang pa eh, Mar meron pa akong iba pang ano eh, na hindi na naisa ka. Down, actually, from the, from the general, down to the tiniest detail, architects should consider that. Kung baga sa, sa design, yung buong city, up to the, gano'ng kaliit yung pako na gagamitin mo, you should know. Okay? Why? Because like I said, architects are the lead professional. They are managers of people, managers of design, and of course, they are expected to be tough. So those are the, you know, what is what an architect should know. So I hope you will also consider all of these things in your design. Okay? So back to the architecture crossroad, when I, eight years ago, when I was there, all of the things that I mentioned to you, those are the things that I considered. I didn't go left, I didn't go right, I didn't move back, 
but I move forward. So it's up to you if you want to move forward. Now to wrap up the inspirational talk, there are three core values that all of the all of the things that I've discussed, you could summarize it in three core values. Wisdom, skill, and virtue. Ito yung mga diniscuss ko kanina sa inyo. But you could generalize it as that. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing what to do. Okay? Knowing what to do. Ano yun? Yung, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, what do you expect? Da? Now that you have the wisdom, what's the next thing? Skill. What is skill? Knowing how to do it. Ano yung knowing how to do it? Yung diniscuss ko sa inyo, yung nine core values. Yung nine values of an architect. Right? That's how you will do it. How you will be successful. And what is the next thing that you need to do? Virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is actually doing all those things. Okay? So, that's it. That's the end of my presentation. And I hope you've learned a lot from the 8 years of my experience compressed in ano ba, 45 minutes. Nagawa ka ba ng 1 hour? Okay, 1 hour. Thank you very much for listening.